Hey guys, welcome to the Elon Musk unveiling of the Cybertruck. If you were watching it and you were wondering if he was punking us or trolling us, I'm still not quite sure because I don't think this is the production truck. It's just so weird and so strange and so not what a pickup truck should be. And quite frankly, the fan art looks better than this. So I'm not really sure if he's still trolling us. Much the same way I'm not sure if Trump is still trolling us by being president. Let's look at the presentation that Elon Musk did of the Cybertruck. So at a certain point, Elon Musk turns around and is like, what else did we did? He's completely unprepared for this presentation. Somebody like should have taken Elon Musk aside and said, hey boss, you have to prepare for this. Think of it as like when you have homework in school and you have to walk in the next day and give a five minute presentation to your fellow classmates. And most people, if they're smart, they prepare, they look at data, they have things in mind. But if you're just like, eh, uh, what else did I do? Kind of oblivious. I think Elon Musk is now has been surrounded by so many people that just lick his butthole all the time that he thinks that it's okay to do this as a, you know, the founder of Tesla or whatever he is. It's really weird and I thought he would be a little bit more prepared. And it just seems like he was winging it. What are the chances you're going to use this pickup truck and you're going to go by on a, on a drive-by and you're going to get shot at? Maybe that's going to become in and useful, but do not forget the whole purpose of the utility of a pickup truck. It's not about getting shot at. It's not about taking a sledgehammer like Gallagher and slamming it to the door of the pickup truck. It's about the utility. I am fascinated by the exoskeleton, but I am more worried about what it would do to other cars that don't have the, ex the exoskeleton. You would severely hurt other cars using this massive car. It's nice that it's got automation uh, protocols built in, but if this thing runs into your 2005 Toyota Corolla, you're going to be dead. If you have a family and you can't afford to buy a $100,000 car like this, you're going to be shit out of luck. The next thing that they do in the presentation, it seems a little bit better presented because they actually have people in and they bring these large metal balls and they drop it on the windshield. This is the same thing that happened with the this Tesla semi. Yeah. The whole purpose of that semi and one of the cost things that happens with semis is that they get the windscreens broken and when a windscreen is broken on a Tesla semi or any semi it costs a lot of money because there's a lot of downtime and it's so much glass that you it costs thousands to replace so if you can even manage that on a large scale it makes a lot of sense on this pickup truck okay uh, I guess we want it to be strong but the whole purpose you know it's not like I go down the street and my windscreen just breaks sometimes you do have fractures and things like that it is nice that's a better system than just having a regular windscreen but it's not really a selling point for me that it's got this bulletproof, very hard windscreen. I'm fine with just a regular windscreen. I do wonder too, if uh, something breaks on your windscreen that you have to take it to Tesla to replace. So at a certain point, they bring out Franz and Franz tosses a big cylinder metal ball into the, the windscreen or the, uh, the window of the car. And I think the purpose was, was not to show it break, but it completely shattered. Maybe in a regular car, it would be completely broken. But this one, like, you could still see that um, the glass was still in there, but it was completely shattered. So the presentation of that does not look good. It's just a not very effective way of showing that the glass is strong, because most people are going to go like, oh, it's still broke and I'm still going to have to replace it. As you know, pickup trucks are extremely uncomfortable because they have very rough suspension. They usually have like the frames are very stiff 
And when you put something in the bed, it gets stiffer and it like does all sorts of weird stuff. So this adaptive air suspension that comes standard on this is pretty fascinating. And I would think that Elon would talk more about it. So as you put things into the bed, it compensates for the load. So it handles about the same. At least that's what I understand it. And in a regular pickup truck, when you put something heavy in a pickup truck, it's going to affect the handling incredibly like night and day. One of the interesting things as well is that it's going to have a very high ground clearance. And because of it's a electric truck, it's very flat at the bottom. So it's going to have like 16 inches of uh, height. Incredible. That's pretty amazing for off-roading. If you're off-roading, which I'm not really sure a person that's going to spend this sort of money is going to be going off-roading. The people that are going to be buying this are like Joe Rogan, uh, you know, these Adam Carolla types with a lot of money and they just want to showboat a little bit. But off-roaders probably will pick something cheaper. And people that work don't want like a very high ground clearance because normally you don't need ground clearance to work. And if you had, if you've done any work on pickup trucks, pickup trucks that are four-wheel drive, they're very high up, the beds are high up. You have to work a lot harder to put like a bag of cement into the bed of a truck that's high up. So it doesn't really help it. It makes it a little bit harder to work with. So Elon Musk had no idea that people use pickup trucks for work. So at a certain point, there is the tug of war between a Ford 150 and a Tesla Cybertruck. First of all, the Cybertruck looks like a cartoon. It doesn't look like a real truck. And it just pulls the F-150 like it was standing still. This proves nothing. This really does nothing for most people. I would rather them have a truck that's pulling like a 747 or something like that, a major amount of payload. That would tell me as a buyer that needs to use this truck for work that I can like haul things with it. I am not gonna be putting a F-150 and we're gonna do a tug of war. That's just completely naive and immature, but it was fun. It's fun to see, but what's the purpose? The on-road performance is kind of interesting because they, you know, it's gonna be fast, faster than a 911. Okay, who cares? But it's nice to have. And then corners, like they, um, corners. They describe it as corners like it's on rails, but nothing, they don't show it cornery like it's on rails. And I don't think it does corner like it's on rails because it's a very heavy car and it's very high up. So. A lot of this is kind of like marketing, but not really. The presentation was like so bad that you kind of have to figure out what the hell is happening here. The range. The range on the truck, there's going to be three ranges. And honestly, the first range is probably anything that I would want here in the DC metro area. It's enough to do all my commuting, all my work. There's a pretty good radius that you can hit with 250 miles. And as a work truck, that's pretty much all you need daily. 500 seems overkill, but 250 should be ideal for living in the city like I do and for most contractors. Contractors, they generally do put like 200 miles a day if they're going back and forth to jobs and getting supplies and things like that. So having a truck that's got that sort of range, for me, that would be the best. And of course, the 250 mile range one is gonna be the cheaper one. And of course, the pricing of this starts at 39,000. And of course, this is what they did with the Model 3. It's gonna take a good year to even see the production go up and ramp up. And they're gonna sell the 500 mile version first, then the 300 mile version. And then eventually they'll get to the 250, maybe. But it's a, um, Strange thing that they didn't mention this up front because they know we already know the secret that they did with the Model 3. I'm not even sure that the Model 3 is available as the forty, the $35,000 version that they promised us in the beginning. I am curious to know how many Cybertrucks have been put deposits on because I do have a Ford F-250 
350. I have a Ford F250. I have a Nissan Frontier or Nissan Hardbody. I've had several Ford F650s. And the thing that you realize with these things, and I'm just going to compare it to the F350. It's a heavy duty one and I need it to pull heavy machinery and stuff. But the thing is, it requires so much maintenance. Diesel, it's very expensive. It's got like the liquid that you have to put in for emissions. You need air filters, you need oil filters, you need the oil. The maintenance on that thing is incredibly expensive. Even if you buy a pickup truck, the, the Cybertruck pickup truck for 70, 80,000, as opposed to a F350 that costs 40,000 for work, eventually the cost of the Cybertruck, if it's reliable, is going to be way cheaper than the F350. The costs of buying the truck are really not relative to the, the long-term reliability of trucks. Ford, GM, Chevy do not make reliable products. You know, I know a lot of people put 500,000 miles on them, but when you add up the maintenance that these trucks cost over time, you would think that it's a gimmick. Like, it's just so incredibly expensive to keep a pickup truck a work pickup truck running that I would be willing to pay $70,000 for an, an electric pickup truck as opposed to buying another F-350 for work. It's just, they're so unreliable. But with an electric pickup truck, electric motors are durable, reliable, they're simple. So at a certain point, there's a quad that comes in just as when I think that, oh yeah, Elon's going to bring out the real truck, the full production quality truck. No, they bring out this electric quad that they made. And then the guy gets off the quad, he opens the, the tailgate. And in the tailgate is a pretty good idea of having a ramp in, uh, built into the, the tailgate and you just kind of pop it out. And it's a very weird angle, so only a quad would get there very easily. A motorcycle that's heavy could not really use it. And it's interesting because as soon as you open the tailgate, the roof of the bed kind of goes in, retracts into the truck. And I really don't like the electric mechanism for the truck, the, the roof of the truck. First of all, if you have to keep opening that over and over, it's just going to get annoying. And frankly, all of these little electric motors that are everywhere are going to break and then they're going to stop. I would rather not have the top on the truck at all. That bed should be just completely open. I know they do it for aerodynamics, but uh, I would rather not have that. And of course, because the Cybertruck is one giant battery, you could charge the quad while in the back of the bed. It's a great idea, but most people don't have electric quads or electric motorcycles yet. So at the end, Elon Musk walks out and it was just a very bad presentation. And at this time, I realized that he's probably talking the truth. This is the truck. This is the only design that I've seen that was actually worse than the fan art that I saw online with the hype of this pickup truck, this electric Tesla pickup truck. I know that he wanted to make it cyberpunk. I don't understand really the reasoning behind it. The uh, audience for pickup trucks th that work don't want a cyber truck pickup truck, but it looks kind of cool. And when you do see it on the road, it'll be very exciting to see because it does look very unique and very strange but one of the things that this truck has nothing to do with the line of other teslas when i before i even thought about the pickup truck i thought that the lines of the tesla cars had to somehow influence this pickup truck and elon did a whole complete change and he's like no we don't want our Tesla cars to look like the pickup truck. So the pickup truck looks completely different, like as if it was made by a different company. And maybe that's good, maybe, maybe that's bad, but having something so unique as a Cybertruck is probably gonna help Tesla in the long run because 
having something that's out there in your face is better than having a bland car. When you look at the Chevy Bolt, it failed because it is a bland car because it didn't push any interesting styling. And when Tesla came out with the Model S, it pushed the styling. Like it did make it look futuristic. The only problem now is that with the Model 3, the Model S, they're starting to look a little bit old because people, you know, they want, they're, you know, accustomed to having a four year lifespan on cars and then like the maker makes another car. But when you think about it, Ducati, all of these makers like Triumph and motorcycles, Porsche, they have a timeless design. And I think that's what Elon's going for with the Tesla. He wants to make it a timeless design. And I think in this case, the Cybertruck is successful. I do wish it was a little bit different. There are ways of making the Cybertruck look a little bit more like a Tesla, but still be futuristic and cyberpunk, and a little bit more utility oriented than having this very sharp, angular, weird look. But I am very curious about this pickup truck. And honestly, I probably would buy it if I had the money instead of buying another Ford F-350 for work. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.